morning. Good morning. Happy Fearless Friday. Good morning, yes. saints of God. Good morning, Facebook family, brother Donald Alexander. All right. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Rose. Good morning, Sister Johnny Harris. Good morning, Sister Jasmine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you guys. Good morning, Brother Stan. Good morning. All right. Good morning, to Brother Todd Floyd. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Put my glasses on so I can see who's coming on. <laughs> Sister Tina, God bless you. Good morning, good morning, saints of God. Glad to have you guys joining us on the line. Brother Clayton Willis, God, good morning. Sister Angela Dobbins and Sister Patricia Johnson. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You guys come in on the line. Go on and notify somebody, share with somebody. All right, Sister Tiana, God bless you. Good to see you on this morning. Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, saints of God. This is Fearless Friday. Yes, yes, yes. It's another end of another week. Brother Eddie, good morning, good morning, good morning. Sister Camille, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, Sister Brenda Ames. Good morning, Sister April Nelson. Good morning. And Brother Freddie Cross. All right, God bless you guys. Coming on in. Sister Valerie Byers. It's good Friday morning. morning. Sis. Good morning, Brother um, Greg Cummings and Brother Chuck Wealth King. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Betty, Brother Woody Johnson. Good morning, sir. All right. Sister Carletta, good morning. Good morning, Sister Sharon. Yes, good to see you guys Thanks. coming in on the line. Sister Kalisha, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you guys for coming in on the line. Good morning to Fearless. Welcome, welcome, Sister Tracy, to Fearless Friday. Y'all ready for today? Yes. This is where we re... Well... Am I here to myself? This is where we rewind and recap, but we're going to do something different today. <laughs> we'll do a little rewinding. We ain't going to rewind all the way because we came in on Thursday, so we're just going to hit something today uh, dealing with, uh, uh, we talked about fear on yesterday, came in and dealt with that. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh Zedekiah and Jeremiah. We're going mm -hmm. to talk about what yes. fear does and how it influences us. And that is yes. that is very, very important. Mm -hmm. You know, many things can be influenced by fear. And and if that happens, then we will make bad decisions and bad choices. So, First Lady, I'm gonna kinda dive into this, okay. uh, starting in the book of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. It was in Jeremiah yesterday, and we're still in the book of Jeremiah trying to get out the Old Testament. It's a lot on fear. Yes, it's a lot yes, on fear. When yes. you get in the New Testament, it's quite a bit on fear. God knew what to give us, and he knew that we were going to need this on fear. So Jeremiah chapter 38, and we just want to read uh, verses 14 through 20 on this Fearless Friday. Jeremiah 38, verses 14 through 20. And we're going to talk about that when we uh, move forward. You want to read it? You want me to okay. read it? Okay. You got it? You got your Bibles open and your scriptures found. This is the New King James Version that I'm reading today. The New King James Version today. It says, Jeremiah 38, 14 through 20 says, Then Zedekiah... The king sent and had Jeremiah the prophet brought to him at the third entrance of the house of the Lord. And the king said to Jeremiah, I will ask you something. Hide nothing from me. Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, if I declare it to you, will you not surely put me to death? If I give you advice, will you not listen to me? 
And so Zedekiah, the king, swore secretly to Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord lives, who made our very souls, I will not put you to death, nor will I give you to the hand of these men who seek your life. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of the host, the God of Israel, If you surely surrender to the king of Babylon's princes, then your soul shall live. Yes. This city shall not be burned with fire. You and your house shall live. But you, if you do not surrender to the king of Babylon's princesses, then this city shall be given into the hand of the Chaldeans. They shall burn it with fire. And you shall not escape from their hand. And Zedekiah the king said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have defected to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand and they abuse me. But Jeremiah said, they shall not deliver you. Please obey the voice of the Lord, which I speak to you. So it shall be well with you and your soul shall live. Amen. So we're talking about choices and decisions, you know, we make those on a daily basis, decisions and choices. And this is the king. This is the king. And, and the king has some decisions and choices to make. And these are some very critical decisions and as you look, as we look into history and see what actually happens here. People's lives depend on these decisions and choices he's going to make. Mm -hmm. his, his son's lives depend on it. His family, you know, it, everything depends on the decision. And his decisions are influenced by fear. And you read it in verse 19. Mm -hmm. I am afraid of the Jews. Yes. That is going to influence his decisions. And, and you know, one thing that Jeremiah said to him, he said, please. Mm -hmm. He please. told the king, he, plead, he pleaded with the king. He said, please obey me. Mm -hmm. Please obey me. Obey the Think Lord, about yes. that. He says, please obey the voice of the Lord. He's yes. speaking on God's behalf. He's yes. begging the king to obey him. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, but here again, here's that fear. And this kind of reminds us, first lady, of Pharaoh. Because of Pharaoh's fear, he destroyed all those young babies, male babies in Egypt. He destroyed them. It wasn't because of anger. It wasn't because of malice. It was because he feared that they would rise up and, and it would rise up and get on the side of his enemies and destroy him. You see how fear works? So that's why we have to come against fear and, and decisions made in emotional, fearful times are decisions that can really crush us and destroy our lives. But first lady, what did you learn, the background, or what, what's happening here in this text? Kind of just bring us up to what's going on during this time of Zedekiah reign. He is, he is in charge and, and they're in a, they're in a bad situation, mm -hmm. you know, but it doesn't have to be, it didn't have to be like this. The first thing, you know, we, we look at that. This, this didn't have to be like this. This was just complete and total disobedience of God. But even after they got in this situation, God is so gracious and so mm -hmm. merciful. Yeah. He's still trying to give them a way out. Mm-hmm. You know, we're continuing through the book of Jeremiah, and we're near the end of um, the book of Jeremiah. You remember we called Jeremiah, and theologians call him the weeping prophet. Yes, and that's he it. Has, he has cried, he has wept, he has wailed over Judah and the leaders and the people and the priesthood. They're in a predicament where God has already forewarned them that they were going to go into captivity. God has already let them know that um, because you have sinned so greatly, because you won't repent, because you won't turn from your choices and your decisions to serve other gods and to um, not serve the one true and living God. Right. God has let them know Thank you, Jesus. that judgment is coming. And so we, we are here at the end of the kings of Judah. Judah has had a few good kings, more than Israel had. Oh, yeah. Israel was destroyed, you know, um, and taken by the Assyrians and scattered all over the face of the earth. But now Judah has fallen into the same sins of Israel. They have done um, some of the things that Israel has done that made them um, 
be taken into captivity, into exile. Now, the prophecies have come about them going into captivity. Jeremiah is prophesying, but there are other prophets in his day that are prophesying the opposite of what Jeremiah has yeah. prophesied. False prophets. They are false prophets. They are there are false prophets in Israel. The priesthood is corrupt. The prophets are false. And the king is is wicked. The king is not a good king. He's an evil king. And so he fears the people and he doesn't want the people to know that he knows that Jeremiah is a true prophet of God. Yes. So they throw Jeremiah in the dungeon. They throw him in the jail. They throw him in the pit. They throw him, and they don't just put him in jail, but they put him down in a cistern. They put him down in a pit yes. um, that's muddy where he is barely surviving and living physically. But Zedekiah secretly goes to Jeremiah. He yes. secretly goes to him and he doesn't want his officials and he doesn't That's want um, the it. people to know. He doesn't That's want the, the prophets to know right. that he's consulting the man of God, the true right. man of God, even after he's heard the false prophecies of all of he's the other, other prophets. And he fears people's opinion. We talked about this um, previously in another segment, fearing the opinions of people. He fears what they're going to think about him if he's going to the man of God that he's already put in prison, the man of God that he's already put in jail, the man of God that he refuses to listen to because he wants to hear the flattering um, opinions of those people who tell you um, God's not going to put a, a yoke on on the neck of Israel. Right. God's going to break the yoke off of the neck of Israel, of, off of Judah. God's going to break this yoke off of Judah just like a man breaks this this wooden yoke off, then that's how um, God's going to give us the victory. And, and it kind of, kind of reminds me of when the children of Israel came out of Egypt and the Lord told them to go up and, and take the land. The spies went in and told them, you know, um, this this is a good land, but, right. you know, this is a land that, that does flow with milk and honey, but... You know, they looked at us like grasshoppers. You know, they the, the land is full of giants, you know. And so the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, came back with a good report, but the 10 other spies came back with a bad report. And then when they found out that, you know, um, God was not pleased with them, they tried to go up anyway right, and right. take the land. Yes. And, and Moses told them, the Lord's not with you. You know, don't go up. But they did it anyway. And sometimes when you do stuff anyway, you're going to do it my way. You know, it's my way or the highway or I'm going to do it. You know, this is not Burger King. Burger King, you know, have it your way. Can't do that. God right. has specific orders, commandments, ways. And he has specific things that he's um, designed for the people of God and the children of God. So it's Jeremiah has been put in prison here, but Zedekiah comes secretly to him to ask and consult advice of him. Now tell me, what do I do? Because the Babylonians have surrounded this city. The Babylonians are, have come. They, they are not just threatening. Now they have come. He's already been set up as a puppet king. He's right. already been set up by them, you know, and he's trying to finagle his way out of, of um, them not taking over Judah, taking over Jerusalem, um, taking them into captivity, all of them into captivity. And so he comes to Jeremiah asking him uh, for advice. Now, Jeremiah says, you're going to kill me once I give it because you didn't already threw me in prison once I told you what thus saith the Lord. You know, sometimes people want to imprison you when you tell them the truth. They want to isolate you and put you in a prison right. because you tell them the truth. They want to put you by yourself because and not have anything to do with you because you tell them the truth. Some people want to, you know, want to really know the truth, but don't right. want other people to know that they're consulting you for the truth. Yes. And that's very, that's very, very, very traumatic uh, and, and, and very... Uh, uh, I guess deceitful and and when it's coming from leaders and and this is so powerful because I believe that we're living in this time when when we begin to talk about this Zedekiah is king mm -hmm. and he knows truth 
Now, you have to think about that. He knows the truth, but he's influenced by fear. Mm -hmm. Man, and, and, and the devil knows if he can get the leader in fear, in mm -hmm. fear, then if he controls him in fear, mm -hmm. then the decisions and his choices that he's going to make is going to bring about destruction. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, in our day and time now, mm -hmm. we see many, many of our political leaders that are influenced by fear. Fear, fear of retaliation, fear of losing my position, fear of losing my seat, uh, my fear of losing my popularity. Right. Now look at right. Jeremiah. Jeremiah could have just, if he had been governed by fear, then Jeremiah would have never been in the pit. They would never put him in prison right. if he just agreed with them, but it's because he would not agree with them. He would not succumb to the pressure that they was putting on him. He didn't do it. The king did. Mm -hmm. Now, because, because this influence of fear, and you got to be real careful with this because sometimes people think fear is, is when people are shaking or intimidated. No, fear can make people very angry, can make them very upset. Mm -hmm. Fear can make them do like mm -hmm. Pharaoh did, start killing innocent children. All of that was fear. That's fear-based. And I think sometimes we think fear is when people are trembling and all that. No, it's, it's within. And if you, fear, mm -hmm. if you fear the people, the king feared the people. He feared their opinions. He feared, now he's king. He's king, but he's tipping around, asking Jeremiah, and he didn't want them to know. Then he even tell Jeremiah, if they come to you and ask you, tell them this. Don't let them know that I came. But he's the king. And because of this, brothers and sisters, because he's governed by fear. And this is how, this is how detrimental fear is. And we have to get this, is fear. Because, because he makes this decision, he makes this choice in fear. His sons are going to die for this. Mm -hmm. This this decision is going to cause his sons to die. Not just his sons, but he's going to, you know, Jeremiah tells him that not only will you live, but the city won't be destroyed. Right, right. He causes Jerusalem to be burned down. Yes. He causes the temple to be burned down. He caught his choice. He's going to try to get away. He's going to try to lead the people and go out the back door. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have a front door and a back door to our houses. He's going to try to go out the back door of the city. He's going to try to, you know, escape for his life. But he's he's going to not only cause the death, like you said, of his sons, which he's going to see with his own eyes. Right. Before they put his eyes out. Yes. They're yes. going to kill his sons right before him. Then they're going to put his eyes out. So the last thing he sees, the last memory that he has of his sight is them killing all of his sons right before his eyes. He could have avoided that had he have listened to the man of God. He could have avoided that had he had just done and taken the advice, the godly advice, the holy advice of the man of God. And so we see him here. We see Zedekiah with an opportunity to do what's right, but he says, I'm, I'm looking at, he's trying to look at the future, his future, not anyone else's future. Right. He's real selfish here. He's trying to look at his own life to save his own right. skin. Yes. yes. And when, when yes. you're in leadership and you're just trying to save your own skin, you're trying to save face and make your own self look good. This is what he's trying to do. He's trying to save face. He's trying to make his own self. He said, I fear these people. I right. fear what they're going to think about me. I'm I afraid. fear I fear what they're going to do because I've done all of this prior to this. I've put you in prison. I've put you in jail. I've, I've gone against the Babylonians. I've done all these things. Now I fear what the people are going to say because the people don't want to listen to you, Jeremiah. Right. Right. And the people don't want to hear what you have to say. But if they find out that I've been listening to you, they're not going to listen to me anymore. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? There's some people that, that they have to sneak and listen to the truth. They have to do certain things because they're so governed by the opinions of other people. Yes. They're yes. so fearful yes. for being uh, about being excommunicated. Mm -hmm. The people turning yes. a cold shoulder to them that they're willing not to obey truth. See, this, this lesson is so relevant to us today, especially where we are now. Brothers and sisters, you have to understand that what we're looking at right now, we could put it on the front page uh, of, of any newspaper. 
in this country. You have to look at this. Mm -hmm. this, yes. is, this is what fear does. Mm -hmm. Fear will yes. destroy nations and mm -hmm. fear will destroy families yes. because everything now has been governed by fear. And like you said, he, wanted, he wants to save face. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and you, you think about that. You think about that because he doesn't want to look bad. His pride don't want him to look bad. Mm -hmm. And because right. he feel like he's right. going to lose that. And so you got pride mixed in here. Mm -hmm. But but all of this is governed by fear. So if I do this, if I do the right thing, if I do the right thing, then something might happen to me. See, he knows the right thing. Understand that. He knows the right thing. So the lesson that we see today is right before us, mm -hmm. even in the world that we live in, even in the country we're living in, just to do it, to be just doing it. Even though I don't agree with it, even though I know it's wrong, I'm going to do it because I am fearful that I might lose my position. I'm fearful that I might lose my seat in the Senate. I'm fearful that I might not get elected right. again. So mm -hmm. right. even though I know what is right, I'm not going to do right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to I'm going to go in the way that 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 I have less. I feel like I can't I, I'm, I'm gonna have less to lose if I do it like this. Governed by fear. Mm -hmm. Governed by fear. So it speaks to where we are today, First Lady. And, and it kind of goes along with yesterday's lesson. When we talk about the pastors, you know, that would not feed God's people. When we talk about those leaders who, when we get to the New Testament, the Lord calls them a harlot. Yes, yes. They're, they're not true shepherds. Right. They're, they are the ones who are in position, but they are not after the welfare of the sheep. They're not after the welfare of the fold being fed. They're not after the welfare of the sheep being safe. They're not after... Zedekiah is not, he's not concerned about anybody in Judah but himself. He's not concerned at this point about anybody else's safety mm -hmm. but his own. He's not concerned about anyone else escaping judgment right. or escaping exile and captivity but himself and right. his family. He's going right. to try to escape with his family. But he's not, he's not even concerned. He leaves a whole nation. Yes. He, used, he leaves a whole country in jeopardy when he tries to escape and get away. Right. That's a hireling. That's somebody yes. who's not yes. concerned about God's yes. people. That's somebody who's out for the money. That's somebody who's out for the prestige. That's somebody who's out for the, the popularity. That's somebody who's out for, you know, to a name for themselves. Zedekiah is king. And he leaves the whole nation to be devoured and conquered by the Babylonians. To be destroyed. To be destroyed, the city to be burnt by fire, and for them to be killed and annihilated. He knows when they come in, they're not going to just um, not kill anybody. They're going to kill the leaders. They're going to kill the, the priesthood. They're going to kill those people who are um, prominent in the nation and the country of Judah. They're going to kill all of the kings, all the royalty. They're going to kill all of them. But Zedekiah, he's not concerned about any of that. He's just concerned about saving his own life. And, 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 and this is the thing that, that you're going to experience. Things will come in difficult times. And we're living in very difficult times. We're yes. living in difficult times now, very tumultuous times that we're living in. And what we have to understand is, is that during these times, you cannot make decisions based on fear. Right. You right. must make right. decisions and choices based on what you know God is saying. Yes. And based on seeking it, God, you know, fear will only allow, fear will influence you to make decisions that are just popular popular everybody agree with it right. everybody's going to be okay with it you know majority. Though, the, yes. you know, majority so so here here the king he makes he makes a horrible decision and choice now 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 this first day we have to say this he knew it, he knew it wasn't the right decision he knew but like you say he didn't care because he was so afraid of the other people he was so afraid of the other leaders he was so afraid and, and I, I believe, I believe we're living, I believe this parallels us right now in America. Uh, I, I really believe that there is so much fear 
so much fear with leaders, even in, 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 in our nation capital, even in Congress, there's so much fear that because of that fear, many are just turning a deaf ear to doing what is right, even though they see what's right, but they won't do as right. And, and brothers and sisters, we have, to, we, have to, we have to understand this. This comes all the way to our homes. This comes always to our house. You know, we, if we get in fear, making decisions and choices, even though we know that ain't the right decision, we know it ain't the right choice, we just do it expecting good results. You know, if, if I do this, then they're not going to be angry with me. They're not going to be mad with me. Uh, I, I, if, if I don't do it, what would people think? See, that that's 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 the thing. If I don't do this, people will say, well, they didn't try. They didn't do it. See, it's all that's fear. All that's fear. Mm -hmm. All that's fear. And the enemy, he's not just shooting at, at the people. He's shooting at the head, the leaders, uh, leaders of families. You know, we're talking about heads of families. We're talking about heads of churches. We're talking about governors and, and you know, and mayors and all of that. The fear of being ridiculed, the fear of being uh, disgraced. Mm -hmm. Now, see, now, see, Jeremiah didn't fear this because he everything he had was taken from him but his truth, but his integrity. This other stuff was taken from him, but that wasn't no big deal to Jeremiah. He was going to serve the Lord. He was going to serve the Lord and the Lord only was he's going to serve. So so this, this lesson is not only relevant, I believe, for us as a country, big time, but also that it is very relevant for us in our everyday walk, our everyday life. And, and, and we, see, we see the nation I mean, it, it's just amazing how parallel this is because we see these false prophets. They are prophesying lies because they don't want to be ostracized by the people. They are saying things and, and, and displaying things that is not true. See, the whole nation, the head, the head is being governed and influenced by fear. And so I want to read this in the New Living Translation and That's in the good. Message Bible. That's I want to read verse 19 so that you can kind of see what, um, when, when the prophet Jeremiah Thank tells you, him that you need to surrender, you need the Babylonians to come and don't fight back, do as you're told. Um, you're going into captivity. It's already a done deal because yes. Yes. The, you, at the boiling point, <laughs> you know, the sins right. and the iniquities are full now. Um, the cup is full, so yes. everybody's going it's into captivity. Tilted. But Jeremiah prophesied that you're going to be in captivity for 70 years. But you got to understand, you're not going to die there. You know, you'll be in captivity 70 years. But you, I need you to just surrender. Don't fight back. Yes. Don't try to escape. Don't do. Don't do any of that. So verse 19 says in the New Living Translation um, that when Jeremiah tells him. Um, I mean, let me start at 18. He says, but if you refuse to surrender, you will not escape. This city will be handed over to the Babylonians and they will burn it to the ground. He says, if you, if you refuse, he says, he says, but it'll go well with you if, if you, if you go on and do what they ask you to do. He says in verse 19, Zedekiah says to him, but I am afraid to surrender. The king said, for the Babylonians may hand me over to the Judeans who have defected to them and who knows what will happen, well, who knows what they will do to me, he says. The Message Bible says um, concerning that passage of, of, of scripture, he says, if you turn yourself over to the generals of the king of Babylon, you will live. This city won't be burnt it will not be burnt down and your family will live. He's telling him what right. he needs to do right. in order for him to be blessed. Right. Right. You're going into captivity, but God can still bless you there in captivity. He said, not only will your family um, live, the city will not be burnt. He says, but if you don't turn yourself over to the generals of the king of Babylon, this city will go into the hands of Chaldeans and they'll burn it down. And, and don't for a minute think there's any escape for you. So in verse 19 in the Message Bible, King Zedekiah says to Jeremiah, but I'm afraid of the Judeans who have already deserted to the Chaldeans. If they get hold of me, they'll rough me up good. 
he's saying, I'm, yeah. I'm afraid of people that I don't even know what they're going to do. Right. I'm afraid. Right. This this fear is not even rational. He's, it's he's, not warranted. No. His, his fear is going into the what ifs, or they might, or they may, or maybe, is. or what if, or the fear goes into not not what's happening or not what's actually true or happening. It goes into the what ifs or this may happen or this might, woulda, shoulda, coulda. You know, it goes into areas that that are not actual facts or not actually happening in real life. He's thinking the worst could happen. And then he's thinking if this happens, then maybe this could happen. If this happens or if we do this, this might happen. And his fear is not warranted. It's not rational. It's not, it's not realistic. And so... He disobeys Jeremiah based on a fear that he has, this um, false evidence that's appearing real to him. Right, right. So, Absolutely. So his choice and decision is based on something that's not even rational. And we cannot make choices and decisions based on stuff that's not even rational. We make choices and decisions to do stuff based on stuff that it ain't even happening. It ain't even real. It's but we make decisions happen. and we make life changing and altering decisions on stuff that's not even real or rational. And we've got to be careful that we don't operate in fear. Fear of people's opinions, fear of what people think, fear of what people surmise to be. And he, and he thought this was true. He thought this was going to happen. But Jeremiah had already let him know if you do what you're told, if you do what. The Chaldeans, if you do what the Babylonians have asked you to do, your family's going to live. You, It's going to go well with you. This city's not going to be burnt down. You're going to go into captivity 70 years, but after 70 years, you're coming out. Jeremiah had already let them know the prophecies that God had given unto him. But, but because he feared the unknown, he feared feared opinions. He feared what people thought about him. He feared because he was in leadership. He feared because he was the king. He feared what people would think about him. Yes. He made choices and decisions here not to obey and not to do what God said. And this fear, this fear that he has, and, and you have to understand that the devil's a bully. He's a bully. He's a bully. You got to see that. He rules. He want to rule by fear. The devil's a bully, and 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 he pushes fear, and he, he starts at the very head. He's a bully. He comes with fear, and and we we see this. I mean, this is being so displayed uh, where we are now in 2020. Uh, you're seeing this. I'm so afraid to speak to talk, and and it's going to get to a point where it's going to be too late. Right. It's going to get to a point where it's going to be too late. And, and Jeremiah pleads with him. The prophet begs him, you know, so we have to we have to pray against the spirit of fear and in, in, in leadership in our country right now, because fear is governing so many of the leaders in this country. Now, fear, 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 because that's what the enemy does. He, that's what he does. And, and he is a bully, first lady. He's a bully. And, and he he talks a big rough game and he will expose you and, and he will ridicule you and, and he does it in such a way that brings fear upon others. Mm -hmm. You think about that because everybody else is watching and said, I don't want that to happen to me. So Zedekiah, Zedekiah, this fear that 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 he's experiencing. And it's and and these these leaders actually are are bullying. They they almost have taken over the country and 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 Zedekiah is so afraid just to speak truth truth boy that's some good stuff there mm -hmm. that's some good stuff first lady because I'm telling you you can't allow you can't allow fear to influence your decisions you cannot allow fear to influence your decision I, I wonder even as we're talking now first lady how many people are uh, even even now and in the past, Many, many wives, many women were in very abusive situation. And, and because they feared, they didn't get out. 
even some that was rescued out of that situation, taken to another place, but they fear uh, what I'm going to do to survive, what I'm going to do to eat. I don't have this. What about my children? All that and end up losing their lives because of the fear of if I do the right thing, if I move, then then what about this? All, all these what ifs. And because of that fear, locked them in, kept them in. And, and that is that we have to look at how this dominates the lives of people in their decision making and in their choices. It's so many people are doing things that they don't want to do. They're doing things that they know is wrong right now, but they are afraid. It, it, it is a it is a stronghold of fear in, in this nation right now. And, and we have to identify that. We have to identify that principality, that that fear that is even in America right now, not to do the right thing. So we have to pray against that, that, that principality because we know we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And what he is using, that weapon that he is using is a weapon of fear and, and, and people fear of being humiliated. They fear of, of the opinions of other people and, and people say stuff, you know, like I knew you since you was a little bit of boy and you gonna let us down, you gonna do all this. And people turn from truth. They turn from doing what is right because they fear the opinions of others. So here he is, he fear the people that's in the city. He fear them, he fear he wanna be, he wants to be, he wants to be in good with them. And, and then he fears these other people that have left the city. And this is going to cause him to make, and, and, and you just have to read this because like you say, they're going, they going to kill his sons, make sure he watches, put his eyes out, put a hook in his nose, and drag him, and drag him back to Babylon. Now, you just think about what I just said. This decision that he knew was not the right decision, but it was governed by fear. He's going to witness his sons being killed. He's going to witness his, 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 his wives and women. The, the Babylonian captains are going to take them. And he, it's going to destroy this nation. But the impact of this is felt even to this day. You, this, this, is, this, is, this is something that is generational that is going to happen. Because eventually when the temple, when, when Israel falls and the temple is destroyed, it, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a hurricane sent through uh, generations and it changes, it changes even, even uh, the course of, of history and things that were supposed to happen. So fear is very detrimental, especially when you're leading and you're leading, you're leading being influenced by fear. I want to say this, that Fear paralyzes good judgment. That's good. That's good. I, I want you to kind of just good. let that saturate and, and, and meditate on that. Fear paralyzes good judgment. When fear comes in, it's kind of like being bitten by a viper, being bitten, bitten by a snake. That poison, that venom, it, it causes paralysis. It causes you not to be able to move normally, to, to control yourself normally. And so fear creates a paralysis in your judgment, a paralysis in your thinking, a paralysis in making good and wise choices and decisions. And so he's, Zedekiah is so fearful he he be, he allows this fear to paralyze good judgment. It's not that he doesn't know that the people are coming against the city of Judah. He knows that. Yes. It's not that he doesn't know that the people of Judah are in the city. He knows that. It's not that he doesn't know that um, the armies of Babylon are strong and greater and have the ability to conquer them. He knows that. He, it's not that he doesn't know that Jeremiah is not a man of God and that, that. That, that Jeremiah is hearing from God. He knows that. It's not that he doesn't know that God has spoken from 
through the mouth of Jeremiah previously and what Jeremiah has said has all come to pass. He knows that. He knows all of this. But instead of doing what the man of God has said and knowing all of the circumstances, instead of doing what's best for him what's and right. the nation, instead of doing what's right and what's best for the country, instead of him doing what he knows that he should be doing, fear paralyzes him and, and creates a paralysis in his judgment and his choices and his thinking. So he doesn't choose the right thing. You know, when Joshua says, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Yes. Whether it's going to be the gods of the Amorites, you know, on the other side of the flood. It's, if it's, it's going to be, you know, if it's going to be the Lord, who are you going to choose? Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Because Joshua says, ask for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. You have to make a choice and decision, even when it's not popular it's not the popular vote. Even when it's not um, the, the main thing that the people want. It's this, the people, the people, the people. You can't go with the people, the people, the people. Right. You've got to go right. with what the, the Lord is saying. What does say? What is right? Yes. What is righteous? What is yes. godly? What is just? Because fear will create a paralysis in your thinking, which will cause you to make choices and decisions that are unjust, that are unrighteous, that are ungodly. This was this is ungodly for him to, to try to escape and leave everybody in that country to fend for themselves. Without a king, without a person on the throne, without a peak person leading, without a peak person leading and guiding the nation. That was his job. That was his responsibility. And he forsakes his duty, his responsibility. And we see that all across this nation. We see this all across this country. People forsaking their job and their responsibility to go with um, the, the ways of the world, to go with the flow of the, the system, to go with the, the good old boy system, to go with, you know, what... The, what's popular and what people think now to go with if I say this I'm bucking against the system if I say something I'm going against the grain if I say something you know I'm not going to um, be in the public uh, opinion the eye the public eye is not going to be on me like it was before it's going to be criticism I'm going to be ostracized I'm going to be criticized I'm going to be um, brought down I'm going to be my, the vote is not going to be there next time. There's so many things that cause people in our country, in our cities, in our states, in our governments, in our, um, in our families, in our communities, in our cities, in our everywhere we go, even in our churches. We will not say what's true. I, I look online. And I look on the television and I'm, I'm thinking, where are the people who call themselves Christians? Where are the people who are supposed to be standing up for righteousness and godliness? Where are the people? Where are the ev evangelicals? Where are these people who, who normally cry out against stuff on television? I don't hear anything. It's silence. Yes. yes. It's silence. Yes. Because people fear the public opinion. They fear what's happening they fear losing churches. They fear losing positions and yes. pastoralships. They fear losing what um, people, you know, because people get money. <laughs> Just be honest. People get money in from people for ministries and for foundations and for organizations and for, for um, whatever, whatever they're over. If I say something, it'll, the money will stop coming in. If I say something, right. you know, I right. might, Absolutely. I might, I might lose this position. If I say something, I might lose, you know, um, the authority and, and the respect that I once had of of these brethren and these circles that I ran in. Yes. And so people. Fear will cause you to, will paralyze good judgment. It will paralyze you where you will not say anything at all to help. But you'll try to save yourself. You'll try to save your own skin. You'll try to save your own ministry. You'll try to save your own um, self. So we, we see this even playing out in our country today. And you know the thing about that, we saw it with King Saul. King Saul, because of fear. 
you know, he didn't do what God told him to do. And, and Samuel asked him, why come you didn't do that? He said, well, the people. And we see, we see the same thing with fear, with Aaron. Aaron didn't want to build that golden calf, but he feared the people. I'm telling you, the devil is a bully. He is a bully. And he will use fear to make you make decisions and choices that you will live to regret yes. because it is done by fear. So, so God, is, God is really speaking to us uh, today in a very profound way. And that's one thing I love about the Word of God. You can put this on the front page. This is what we're suffering now. This is the great consequences that is happening in this country right now is there's so much fear. There's so much fear of losing something, losing position, losing influence. There's so much fear right now. We're seeing the same thing that played out in the days of King Saul, the same thing that played out even with the priests priesthood with Aaron. Aaron built a golden calf and said, these be the gods that brought you out of Egypt. Do you know that Moses said God was going to kill Aaron at that very point? And Moses said, I had to pray for him that God wouldn't kill him. But you know what? Aaron still died. God, they took Aaron up on the mountain. And when he got on the mountain, they stripped everything off of him, put it on his son. Aaron fell dead because, because he was he allowed fear to govern him to make a, a, a horrific decision. Yeah, and and, and Moses said, Moses said, what have they done to you? I mean, you know, Moses was like, what have they done to you for you to do something like this? And, and I believe the day when we look at this country, fear, fear is the reason why we're where we are now. Mm -hmm. Fear, where we are now is because of fear. We might as well say it, might as well tell the truth. God has brought us to this point. The fear, the fear, 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 fear of leaders has brought us just, we going this way, we gonna do it this way. And, and that is fear when, when you won't break with any type of union uh, because you're afraid that you'll be criticized. If you say, well, I, I'm, I'm, I, I got to I gotta go the way of the Democrats or I got to go the way of the Republicans because they might say something. You know, this is my party and this is, this is the way my mother and father. And you know that is wrong. I'm telling you, fear has brought us to this point. And brothers and sisters, if we don't, if we're not careful, fear will take us to a place just fearing and it'll take us to a place where Zedekiah is right now. And then when they realize, then when they realize it's, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late, it's too late. God says, okay, you're going to have to go ahead and bow now. now this is, this, you don't have any more options. You had options, but you allowed fear to govern you now. This is what you must do. And he was afraid to do it. Now, he believed Jeremiah. He believed the truth. But when you're afraid, first lady, to obey truth, when you're afraid to do truth, and especially when you are a leader, then that is a bad, bad, bad place to be. If you are parents, we, we look at parents now and sometimes parents, the fear of, of I want my children to like me. I want my children to, 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 to like me and, and I want them to, to uh, want to be around me and all of that. You still can't allow fear to cause you to make bad decisions, bad choices. You, right. you gotta, you gotta right. hear that. And how many have been destroyed? How many people have been destroyed because somebody was fearful and they didn't, they didn't make the choice they, made, they, they, they knew they should have made because they're governed by fear. Incredible lesson this morning. I'm telling you, this is an incredible lesson. The book of Jeremiah is an incredible book and it speaks to where we are as a nation and as a country even now. Amen. So, um, just remembering today with Zedekiah's fears and Jeremiah's advice, don't allow fear to paralyze you and to make you have a paralysis in making the right choices and the right decisions. Mm -hmm. Thinking what might happen or if, if I do this, um, I think that if I do this, maybe something else bad will happen or there's going to be a domino effect of, of just um, evil and bad things happening. When we do what's right, 
when we do what God has said, when we obey God's word, when we adhere to God's word, we'll be blessed. You, can't, you cannot help but be blessed when you obey God's word. Blessings are attached to God's word. But when we disobey God's word, yes. when we don't adhere to God's word, that's when the cursings come. That's when bad things happen. And Zedekiah saw this when he didn't adhere to the word of the Lord, which came from the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah. Bad things happened. Awful things, things. That, things that should not have ever happened, happened. They were going to go into captivity. It's already prophesied. It was already in the, in the work. It was already... Um, in motion it was already happening one way or another but in the in the process of going into captivity he could have avoided some things he could have avoided his eyes being put out he could have avoided his sons being killed before them before his face he could have uh, avoided the city of jerusalem being burned down he could have avoided the walls of of Jerusalem being broken down and burned. He could have avoided even the temple, the tabernacle being destroyed and yes. burned down. Yes. Every area of his life was burnt up and burnt down. Folks and broken lost down. their lives. The, the city um, was not mm -hmm. only attacked, but all the leadership was killed mm -hmm. in the city. That could have been avoided had he made the right choice. So we see the domino effect which bad choices and bad decisions um, have when we are governed by fear you cannot be governed by fear when you're making important choices and decisions do not ever allow yourself to make an important a very um, meaningful important and valuable decision when, when it comes to making decisions and choices about things that are very very crucial Never allow yourself to make it at a point where you are fearful or afraid. Yes. If you need to step back and say, I can't make a choice or a decision right now. Let me pray about it. Let me get myself together. Let me. But do not allow yourself to make a decision and a choice in the midst of fear. Yes. Because when you do that, you're making a bad choice and it's going to have um, repercussions that are are insurmountable that are that are that will govern and that will affect the rest of your life and probably the lives of others when it's that critical so we learn from zedekiah what not to do you can learn something from everybody right you can learn right. what to do right. and you can learn what not to do i'm gonna say that again you can learn something from everybody you can learn what to do what and you can learn do. what not to do so we learn from Zedekiah today what not to do. Not to make a critical or an important decision in the midst of fear. And, and always, when you're making a, a, an important and a critical decision, always balance it with the Word of God. Always seek the mind of God. It was on the feed. You know, if we acknowledge God in all our ways, yes, He will direct our path. If we listen for the voice of God, if we have an ear to hear what his spirit is saying unto us, God will not steer us or direct us wrong. The steps of a good man are ordered by the, by Lord, the Lord and he will delight in our ways. He will order our footsteps and he will delight in our ways. He will order our steps in the way we should go. Because he knows the way that we should go. He knows the way that we should take. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what's on the other side. He knows what's going to happen before it even happens. So since God knows all that, we need to follow his direction and his leadership and his guidance. And we cannot allow fear to derail us and to derode us and to debunk us and make us go a different direction than what God is calling for. Amen. So brothers and sisters. Share the word today. Share the word uh, and let us pray against that principality that deals with fear, that demonic force, that, that, that fear is a bully. And right now, right now, this is where we are in America today. So we need to pray. We need to pray that God would send courage, courage, courage. And the one thing that we found out today yes. that is so powerful about yes. fear, it locks into, it locks into pride. It locks into pride. It locks into arrogance. 
when you feel because there is pride because there is arrogant then you're going to try to do anything you can to save face and then here fear comes say well if you do this this is what's going to happen this is what it's going to look like this is what's going to happen to you that's what this is the way history is going to record you fear fear i'm telling you it is one of satan's great weapons and we're seeing it at work in this country like we have never seen it before god bless you brothers and sisters be sure and share this word and give somebody some hope some confidence in in these days to come and you can connect with us um, it's on the feed right now at axeministriesonline.org if you have prayer requests be sure and send them into our email account at wtebroadcast at gmail.com we love to connect and pray with you and for you this is fearless friday and tonight we do have our millennial round top table uh, talk on zoom so join us at 8 p.m central standard time tonight at 8 for all of those who are millennials and who are 40 ish amen <laughs> 40 ish amen. and so god bless you is our prayer now um, let me say this we are getting ready to have this is normally every year our women's conference preparation time and you normally hear, have heard things about women's conference up to this point but we want to invite you to our ax women's 30th annual virtual women's conference it will be virtual online we want you to join us yes get the word out we're going to start shooting that information out via email and via um, social media via text we want you to um, join us for our winning women warriors conference Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Yes. We want you to get ready, get prepared for our women's conference. It will be virtual. This will be a first time in the history of the Axe Women's Ministry that we will have a virtual conference. Tamara, you got to join us um, for our virtual conference. We want everybody to get the word out. We're going to have a virtual women's conference this year for Axe Ministries. Um, women's department so um, you're going to hear more coming up we're going to have guest speakers online we're going to have um, a concert we're going to have listen we're going to even do that table decoration contest at our um, axe women's um, scholarship tea and brunch where we do our fundraiser for our scholarships instead of having the brunch where you come and sit down and eat we're going to have um, the table set up and we're going to still do that um, best decorated table contest and we're yes. asking you to um, join us by asking at least one person to donate ten dollars to the scholarship funds we even though we're in pandemic we still gave out three scholarships this year yes. you know even though we are not meeting at the church um, location physically um, for months we hadn't been we are still um, blessing our students still being a blessing to those who are going to school even online so you want to join us we have a lot planned we're getting ready to do this thing virtual hallelujah thank you jesus we're excited about our third this is our 30th year we cannot we cannot go out of three 30 years three decades we cannot go out of 30 years of women's ministry without celebrating and without giving god honor even if it's virtual you won't want to miss it and so you're going to see some things coming um, forth in the social media and online um, through your email and we're going to um, push this out even in mail so be looking forward to hearing um, this information it is the first the the conference will be the first weekend in november that's the 6th the 7th and the 8th of november mark your calendars for acts virtual women's conference 6th 7th and 8th that's a friday saturday sunday you don't want to miss it we're excited about what god's going to do you'll hear about who our guest speaker lineup is going to be you'll hear about who our guest um um song artist is going to be you're gonna we're gonna have a time online do you hear me we're gonna have a time online so Amen. be sure and join us for this year's winning women warriors conference our colors this year for those of you who are trying to get your colors together because we're gonna have a virtual um best dress camouflage contest like we normally do our colors for this year are the green camouflage and emerald green you know emerald green is the number is the color for 30 
and we're going to um, match that with pearls. Pearls is the color for 30 years. So you're going to have on your camouflage, your emerald green, and your pearls this year. Man. So those are our colors. Our scripture will be coming from Luke chapter 14 um, and um, 1 Samuel. Um, don't miss it. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it because we are excited. We're excited. We're excited about what God's going to do. Um, just to let you know, we will um, continue with the, the scholarship benefit concert we're going to have, the conference highlights, the contest we're going to have. And so we want to do this different. You know, normally it's you invite the most guests to the conference um, and you, you got a, a prize or award or whatever. This time it's going to be who can um, share the most online. <laughs> so we've got some That's things. Good. We've got some things online that we want to do that we want you to get prepared and ready for. And, and we cannot omit. Um, we do the prayer on the line every morning from 530 to 630. Um, some of you don't know that that emanated, originated and began with the women's ministry praying for our women's conference. So beginning October um, the 1st through October the 31st, we want to do that whole month of um, all the women joining us online. If you can't come in at 5.30, come in at 6. But we want you to do at least 30 minutes of prayer for 30 years of ministry on that prayer line. Join us in the morning. Don't You don't have to wait till October 31st, but join us on the weekend. We need we need all of our weekend warriors. We need all our prayer warriors coming online. You say, well, I don't know if I'm a prayer warrior or not. Men ought to always pray. It's for all men, all women, for everybody. Everybody come on the line and pray with us in the mornings. Um, we're looking for God to bless us. We're praying for the conference. We're praying for this being our very first one. We're praying for... Um, you know, God to lead us, to guide us, and to bless us. We're looking forward to trying to do some new things. You'll hear more about it. Um, if you have some pictures, some photos that you would like to email in to, to ask, um, you can do that to our email address um, for, don't, don't send them into wtebroadcast at gmail.com. That's for prayer requests. But if you have some photos that you would like to include in our PowerPoint presentation for 30 years of ministry, um, you can send them to uh, axorg, A-C-T-S-O-R-G, at sbcglobal.net. Once again, that's our church email address, axorg at sbcglobal.net. Send it in there. If you have some photos that you would like to include in our PowerPoint presentation for 30 years of women's ministry, um, we don't want you um, to um, think that we're not trying to reach out to everybody. But if you want to have a table, you're going to contact Sister Sabrina Rogers Lee. Sabrina Lee. Um, contact her, Minister Sabrina Lee, um, for your table and we're going to get this ball rolling and we're going to have this virtual women's conference it's coming up you'll see more in the days to come you'll hear more in the days to come but god bless you is our prayer we thank you for joining us Amen. for this fearless Amen. friday god bless you have a wonderful blessed weekend and we look to see you and hear you on the line in the morning at 5 30 god bless oh and millennials at eight tonight yes yes god bless you is our prayer have a wonderful blessed day in jesus name